Hello everybody, so today we have a BMW 7 Series, it's a 2003 year made and we had a problem with the ABS system, we had ABS lights on and we had a lot of faults, <clears throat> basically the ESP system is not working, the vehicle stabilization system is not working and we have a plenty of errors. We did scan all system, we did scan all the systems and in this case here you can see the ETC 16 ECU which one says the same then there is a problem with the ESP and uh, ABS communication as you can see a lot of uh, faults is all about the canvas so another fault is under voltage so that means uh, something was bad with the battery but mainly you had see there is only can fault the can line missing and thing like that then can be because of a battery and it, that's right in this car the battery is uh, need to be replaced and recharged but anyway we did recharge and uh, as you can see we have all those faults which one sits inside of uh, any uh, ECU which one is located on this car on this car is a uh, plenty ECUs as you can see and they all line to the one can line so that's very important even in the parking height system as you can see there's just different uh, the distance sensor then we had a plenty of other ECU units and the end one is dynamic drive so what we're gonna do now after the full scanning of all those felt memories before we start any uh, testing we need to clear them out so just go ahead and delete all faults and the all faults will be deleted on the system and we have to wait some time so after deleting the faults is pretty nice weave we have zero faults the all faults is gone but some of them is left so basically one fault is left that means that fault is active but uh, you can always start the car again and test it out and uh, sometime just uh, restart the engine and probably you will get some more faults on that's what we done and uh, as you can see we can go ahead and see these systems uh, in which ones we still have those faults in so let's go ahead and see there we have a dynamic drive so that's very important because we had that fault on the screen the bad dynamic drive the same way you can see there's a two faults in the engine control and let's go ahead we're gonna move through all those fault memories let's go inside so that is the ECU EDC 16C 1.5 version so in our memory we can see just left only two faults which one is just about the glow plugs uh, that's not very important let's go ahead and see the next one this next one is automatic transmission so in this case we can see there's a con communication between ABS ASR and ASP system so that's the problem definitely let's go ahead and move to the next one it's an instrument cluster so what we can see there is again a fault and it's can signal from instrument cluster and ESP control unit all about the can line so we can definitely know that there is problem with the can line this is a auxiliary heater so that's in our case we don't need to know about that nothing um, let's go ahead and see what we have in the front passenger door and what's that fault is in there and this is just because of a mirror side position but that's not big deal as well mainly thing what we're looking for is uh, all faults with which one line to the ABS ESP uh, stability system so that's very important to understand how many faults in which ECUs because ABS ESP system is communicate with most of the systems in this case the network system is not acceptable so I don't know probably this is just out of the system and there is cannot be diagnosed this is not big deal let's go ahead and see dynamic drive dynamic drive system is the same as you can see we had a fault vehicle leans more stably when cornering so that means it lines the same to the ESP and ABS system they are both uh, lined in the one can line so let's go ahead and see in the drive model 2.1 what we had what kind of faults we have there is some attention and uh, we can go ahead and see exactly the faults and again it's con communication with the accelerator sensor 
the same with the JOV sensor, the vehicle speed sensor and ESP com communication. That's why that system is communicates with the ESP ABS and reads the all needed data. And if the CAN line is bad, you cannot done you can't do nothing with it. So let's go and see and another system which one is 3.1 on the dynamic system. There's basically two dynamic system versions is uh, how for now we're looking in the diagnostics and let's see what their fault we have. As you can see, the probably those faults is the same, but the ECU shows that it's the unknown. That's not a big deal. We know what kind of faults they are in the first version. So yeah, four faults in there, four faults in there. Just go back. Let's see what we have in the parking brake system. The parking brake system probably, as you can see, brake and drive control. The same faulty and let's see what there is inside and as you can see CAN data communication CAN bus line so again as you can see how many faults we have after switching off on ignition about the CAN communication uh, if the CAN line is bad you need to find what the problem is the first thing can be bad some kind of power supply so that's what we're gonna do now we go ahead and start do a practice on it so in this case as you can see esp and abs system is located into this control unit it's in the one piece and this only one plug is connected to there so it's nothing more than that the esp and abs is in one side in one module inside of it it's pretty good location so what we do first if we had uh, another used one we just connect it and diagnose can we find it because the ECU did not even find it in the first run so in the second run we do the same so it's connection one now and please wait um, that's what we're gonna do we just wait and as you can see this waiting time for me is a little bit too long I would say it's still not connecting it's still connecting but no chance so that means the ABS unit probably is okay as you can see it's not connecting we had a fault on the screen ignition on and nothing it did not connect and still waiting and here you go we had a fault and its control unit cannot be connected please switch off ignition and blah 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 so on it doesn't mean anything because it's simply we cannot connect it that means then the data line is out of the range so what we're gonna do now first we can check if there is actually power supply because if there is no power supply there's no chance and let's go inside the sys troubleshooting there is a bosch 1.34 version system which is 42 pins plug and we have in the diagnostic a uh, full review of all the full uh, explanation how to fix this all systems how to see the faults what the faults mean how to test the system where the system is located pinouts electric diagrams uh, control unit terminal assignment so all that necessary information we have so we don't need to google anything we just keep going and just looking what we can the warning lamp is on and we're gonna go and try the first thing first things first you have to see what kind of problems can be there is a text which you can stop the video and read if you like but the mainly thing we just go and start with the system power supply we can do an instrument cluster test we can do a CAN bus test so for now let's see if we don't have a power supply we don't get a CAN bus system as well so as you can see the first thing check the power supply terminal 13 so that means we had a pinouts the pinout between the second and first pin second pin is plus first minus six pin is plus first minus and then 10 is plus and five minus and we need 20, 12 13 volts so let's go and use some uh, hand gloves first uh, because electric ones uh, I don't think is good with the gloves so the best thing is just use this lovely liquid moly it's not a not a promotion it's just a things what, what i using and it's very good and handy you have like a invisible gloves on so your hands stay safe and you can wash them off pretty easy so let's go ahead let's unplug the plug of the ecu because of course we did check and the ecu is okay 
so the ECU is not bad how we supposed and now we're gonna go ahead and test it out we already plug in the some pins on here you go we can see on the back is a plus and minus connection ports so we connect these ports plus and minus to the tool you can use actually any test tool like a multimeter on the, or the tester it doesn't matter only in this system we have all in one so we plug it into the plug those pins which one been uh, shown before so the first one was the minus and the second one was the plus as you can see there yeah those are bigger pins and uh, these pins have to supply with the nominal power of uh, I would reckon 12 volts if the battery is charged and if the battery is okay you have to check that as well and uh, we are testing now the pins uh, if there is a voltage so uh, connect and leads to the pin second and two uh, what the fault is I don't know what that is um, oh yeah we probably need to do a calibration yes that's right it's a calibration so we cannot pass that actually there's no chance we need to calibrate so let's go ahead and push the calibrate button it's usually all stuff like that you just go ahead and uh, take those two pins you need to connect them together it's probably on the old multimeters you just connect them to together the plus and the minus and you go ahead and do a calibration mode in the calibration mode the system will recognize the zero point you go ahead and press the calibrate it calibrates uh, the tool you had a zero volts so that means you had a good testing results when you will do it as you can see now the 13.04 volts so this is a green in green it means you have a nice uh, nice reading the same we're gonna do on the next ones so we need to touch them all so I had a pin one and that pin was uh, quite not sure now in the video but uh, that's because I'm reading the voice on the video is a six and the one the six is a plus and one is a minus do we have the same yeah we have the same this is the same connections is the same and let's go ahead and now I replug it how I understand that war was like uh, between pins 10 and uh, pin uh, 5 if I'm okay because the 5 was a minus and 10 was a plus you can you have to choose the right pins you must not damage anything so that's very important you have to be clearly good on that and the reading should be the same and it did the same actually so what that means is uh, we have all system with the power supply all is good and there is no problem with the power supply um the same we can check those fuses but the fuses is okay so we can just keep reading the text you can pause the video and see the text if you like as you can see what we can do next is just test the pluses probably we don't have a plus and you can see there's a pin the last pin I would reckon is it is it the last pin is the last pin yeah yeah it's uh, not the last pin actually it's 27 pin because the last pin is 42 so yeah engine switch it off uh, all loads off and uh, we need get reading 12 I would say the same 12 or 13 volts anything can be good and uh, minus is on the on the yeah electric ignition lock defective yeah these problems can be if their voltage is not reached but actually as you can see you can read the text and do whatever you like probably in your case it will be something different but in my case all is okay I got good power supply so that's actually is not the problem and uh, I would say I would say then in this case all is good so what we can do next is uh, looking for a CAN bus line so in CAN bus is a little bit different because in CAN bus line you need what you need in CAN bus line you need to check the CAN line is the CAN line will be okay it's uh, pretty interesting because uh, you can see there is a data transfer between the systems you need to switch off ignition definitely and the CAN bus line is uh, tested by the oscilloscope and uh, first thing by the voltage as you can see the can line as we all know is about 5 volts and we need to test those can lines they all is pinned as you can see there is another thing we need to test the 
uh, resistance of the CAN line. As we all know, the CAN line resistance is 120 volts, something between that. And uh, in the CAN line, we can test that voltage. And as you can see there, under the car, on the, I would say, right-hand side, you can see there is a, a harness. And there is a resistor uh, pinned into the special plug. So uh, what you need to do, you need to find that plug. Uh, in my case, uh, I already did find it. And uh, you need to see it's located uh, front right wheel housing. And uh, check terminant resistance of a component CAN data bus. Ignition, of course, off. And we need to measure our winding harness and terminal, terminal 2. It's terminal 2 and the terminal 5. Between that should be uh, 115, 125 ohms. Um, let's go ahead and we're going to test it out. We need to change, of course, the voltage. Let's go see. I will show you where the plug is. How I reach it, pretty easy. The plug is located just under the under the wheel housing. Yeah, it's, it's accessible in my case. Here you can see this is a CAN line wires. Uh, they coming from the CAN line and in end of it as you can see is a resistor inside of this little cap is 120 ohms uh, CAN line resistor because uh, data cannot be exceeded between the ECUs if you don't have a resistance on the end of the CAN bus line so the resistance uh, we have and we're gonna test it out we just use a special pins to pin in and see can we can we can we read the resistance and you see the resistor is okay it's 120 ohms so that means we no need to deal with that because that is uh, okay so what we need to do next in the diagrams was said can you test it between pins second and pin 5 as you can see here so we already plug it in and let's go ahead and test it out. And as you can see, we already have a problem. We can see there is a, should be 115 to 125 ohms because that uh, resistance is in another side of a CAN line. So basically, this is not only the one side. And if we go below a little, 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 oh, 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 and as you can see, we had the broken wires. Is it not good? So you can try to find the problem, but actually problem is in the face of your eyes. So under the, yeah, under this uh, thing, basically, we had a problem and there's a no. So let's go ahead and switch on ignition now. <clears throat> we did connect those wires together. And as you can see, we already, all faults is gone. The clean dash. So what we're going to do now, we just try to head. I even did not test it again, but it, I think there should be okay. It's uh, just because of the wires. So let's go ahead and see repair where we have a ESP system. There is a ABS, CSP. Here we go. Go ahead and let's see. We ignition on is now. And SD hardware is connecting. Connecting. Please wait. Connecting. And the lovely, as you can see, safety specifications do not perform when you're driving. And perfect, we have an ECU on the line back, we had an error memory, and you can see there is a jaw rate sensor, dynamic drive, can, 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 no problem. What we need to do, we just clear all the old fault memory out. Because after we cleaning the fault memory, uh, as you can see, fault memory has been cleared, and perfect. There is a zero fault, so that means all system is perfect now, and let's go ahead and closer look. The, basically, the old... ABS unit is okay. It's no need to be replaced. All problems was just into the contacts. I already been opening a lot of places, and this little thing, uh, thanks thanks because of the good quality of diagnostic systems, so I can diagnose that pretty easy. And I just connected those wires back together, and the CAN line is okay. So I just need to put the all back things back together. And the system is working perfect. So thanks for watching. If this video was helpful, leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe on the channel. And I think so. See you in the next video about the electrics. I just need to put some sticker on around. So just make it all nice look. I just leave it in here. 
so the next time you will be able to see it on the car. Otherwise, it's lining down where the wheel housing is. I don't know why they're so deep, but if you will not going to be able to find it, it will be a problem. So the same I done in here, put all things back together. And I would say on this moment is done. So again, thanks for watching. Leave a like, give a come and subscribe. Bye.